Bwana asifiwe Amjamboni So glad to be here with you God has been good to us all of us Our being back in church like this is a testimony that he is alive and he cares And to his name just as you have sung the choir you all the praise honor glory because he is the majesty i'm glad to be here with you for this yet another time i was with you, you here for the camp meetings a few years ago and i was so much blessed i will never forget the time that we spent together is still very fresh in my memory the fellowship that we had together and again this time to be back at the KCC is certainly a privilege and something i thank god for if you were to ask me a question about KCC if i were to write a message to the seven churches today this would be my testimony about KCC alive and well I've been following you on your website once in a while hearing from one another from your meets right here but your own engagement here not only to one another but in your community I will tell you is something that the heaven appreciates and even having had this morning our pastors announced that yes you think about your community that's what it is to be a christian to be a people who love god disciples of christ is not about coming together enjoying our time together only it's about being out there touching lives of people for the better so i congratulate you and i pray that that fire will continue to grow you're not here by you're here for a purpose pressing on to higher ground we will start our series this evening and therefore this is an appeal that i want to bring to you from the lord in preparation of what you have decided to have evangelistic meetings for the next 2 weeks pray for me pray me for my fellow speakers but let's pray for one another and pray for the others who may have the opportunity to participate with us online god is in our midst Amen. we are in his presence for 2 weeks can you imagine that and therefore may the holy spirit of god speak to you personally individually with a focused message just for you as you listen listen carefully not to our words listen to what the holy spirit will interpret in your heart because the holy spirit will work with you and for you and me i have prayed and will continue to pray that god will manifest himself in another way before you and me during these two weeks together and that it will be for the glory of his name but again for my own growth even as i wait for his second coming yes pressing on to higher ground let's pray father in heaven yes there is a higher ground and right now i pray that you will help me again to see the higher ground to perceive the higher ground to work for and aspire for 
the higher ground, but the greatest prayer is for me and my colleagues participating in this worship to actually attain to the higher ground. It is not by our might, neither will it be by our power, but by your Holy Spirit it can be done. May your will reign supreme even now, for I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grand tsunami, many of you will remember, in Asia, before the giant waves slammed into Sri Lanka, the island of Sri Lanka, and India, the Indian coastline in 2004, something unique happened. Animals seemed to know what was about to happen and fled into safety. Dogs refused to go outdoors. Flamingos abandoned their low-lying breeding areas. Zoo animals rushed into their shelters and they could not be enticed to come back. Elephants, big as they are, they screamed as they ran for the higher ground. Ravi Korea, the president of the Sri Lanka Wildlife Conservation Society, he witnessed this and he says a few things. One of them is that he did not see any animal carcass. Nor did the park personnel know of any other than two water buffaloes that had died, he said. Otherwise, all the other animals escaped. About an hour before the tsunami, Korea said, people at the Yala National Park observed the three elephants running away from the Padagamaha beach where the waves were ravaging the coastlines. Korea continues to say, yeah, immigrants who came in, I mean, tourists who came as tourists, some of them were washed and died as animals were running onto the higher ground. Where were they running to? One friend in the southern Sri Lankan town in Dokwela recalls that bats were frantically flying away just before the tsunami struck. Another friend who lives on the coast near Gali, a place called Gali, said two dogs could not go for their daily run on the beach. Buffalo, goats, and the dogs were found unharmed. Yes, birds flew to the higher ground beforehand. And yeah, those three elephants, and here is another testimony. As they were flying with the helicopter on top of the area that was affected, they saw abundant life, wildlife, including elephants, buffaloes, deer, and not a single animal corpse. Animals were not harmed, and they may have sought out higher ground. This is very interesting, commented the other. I'm finding bodies of humans, but I have not seen body of a dead animal. Yes, there is a higher ground in the physical world, but I will remind you, even in the spiritual world, there is a higher ground. I'm not here by accident. I'm here for a higher ground. A higher ground. You will agree me, with me, those of you who come from the mountains, higher grounds, it's cool up there. In the spiritual higher ground, there is peace in the higher ground. 
in the physical, yes, there is beauty in the higher ground. In the spiritual, you will behold the glory of God. In the physical, you can see far and vividly than if you were on the ground. But you know, when you are in the spiritual higher ground, you will find wisdom, knowledge, and truth on the higher ground. Yes, there is fresh air in the physical higher ground, but I will tell you, there is life on the spiritual higher ground. The higher ground has been used for many years, you remember, as a hiding place. Fortresses are built on the higher ground. I will tell you, in the spiritual higher ground, the presence of God dwells safe forever on that higher ground. Yes, in the higher ground, once you strike the higher ground, those of you who do mountain climbing, there is that great sense of achievement that comes to one. In the spiritual higher ground, there is celebration at home at last with my God. Yes, there is a higher ground, and I will tell you, life is fun on the higher ground, and there you will never be the same. That's why Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, says these words, and if he were here present, I know it would be emphatically not that I have already attained or I am already perfected. No, 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 no. But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, he says, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one, one, one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal. I press toward the goal. I press toward the goal, says Paul, for the prize of the upward call on of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the goal. And the goal? The higher ground. In life, Paul has written about this. Don't just drift, float, move aimlessly. That's why I'm caught by these two places that you have placed up here. I'm not here by accident. I'm created, I'm designed, I'm formed, created by my God. Not for nothing, but for a purpose. And that purpose is greater than anything else that can be in my life. I've got to find that purpose. I've got to know that purpose. I've got to have that purpose as my purpose. And even as I move on, think about what really excites you right now in your life. It seems supreme in your life. It drives you. It gives you a motivation. It actually gives you a reason to be. Think about it as a young man, as a grown-up, as a child. What is it? But compare to that which is of a higher ground and be my own judge. According to God, am I still on the track onto the higher ground? I will caution me, caution us. It's very easy to be distracted especially 
in our word world today. Our world is crowded. I made a resolution recently. I hadn't quite realized that the little phone I carry in my hand has taken my entire life as it were, bombarding me from every side and in the end causing me a lot of stress. Something of my own choice. Controlling me? It's very easy today to be distracted. Are you on track to the higher ground? There is a higher ground. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. No, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, another fashion says, so I run with a purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. No, the life is too serious to be taken so lightly. I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. No, he is determined that his life is focused with a purpose. And this purpose, when you study Paul, is nothing else than the higher ground. For its school is safer on the higher ground. This is what Sister White writes. Place for yourself a high standard and honestly strive to reach it. A high standard. You should be content with no mean attainments. Aim high and spare no efforts to reach the standard. Aim high. Sometimes we are, high. We are afraid to set up high standard. Listen to this. Crust Object Lessons Page 330, God will accept only those who are determined to aim high. He places every human agent under obligation to do their best to become what God can make of them. Remember, page 331 of the same book, Crust Object Lessons, remember that you will never reach a higher standard than you set yourself. Then set your mark high and step by step, even though it be by painful effort, by self-denial and sacrifice, ascend the whole length of the ladder of progress. What an encouragement. What a challenge that is set before you. This is very true even in ordinary life. This is what we tell our children. We encourage our children, our young people, aim high, aim high, work towards it, strive for it, go for it. We cheer them on as it were. In the spiritual arena, God is doing the same to you and me, cheering you on. My child, aim higher, keep going. Don't you be afraid to set it high. Be sure to, uh, to maintain. Uh, no, let me read this. Never be afraid of raising the standard too high. That's the line I wanted. Never be afraid. And I will tell you later why. Listen to this. Gospel Workers 291. Many who are qualified to do an excellent work accomplish little because they attempt little. Thousands pass through life as if they had no great object for which to live, no high standard to reach. And I guess for such, they are floating and drifting. One reason for this is the low estimate which they place upon themselves. Christ paid an 
infinite price for us. And according to the price paid, he desires us to value ourselves. And I guess this is what she's saying. If we have appropriated right value on ourselves as God has, we would aim high and not less. We would aim high for after all, we are made in the image of our heavenly father. We are created. We did not happen by accident. We are designed. Therefore, place for yourself a high standard and earnestly strive to reach it. You should not be content with mean attainments. I am high. Spare no pains to reach those. God will not accept those who determine who are determined, God will accept only those who are determined to aim high. So set your mark high and keep going. Don't be afraid to beat. Nelson Mandela, I remember, he said, it is not where you start, but how high you aim that matters for success. He also said, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb in life. If you think you have arrived, you have achieved it, check carefully, for there is yet a higher ground. Yet a higher ground. I will tell you this. While we are in this part of the world, Waiting for the world to come, there will always be a higher ground. Never you get to a point and relax and think, warm yourself, that I have arrived. And I'm talking about my own spirituality. Once it gets to that point where I am confident that I have, and sometimes it happens to me, I'm better than thou, I am more than you, I am, I am, I am. That's a danger sign. Right there. For there is always a higher ground. And actually, I find that very clearly in the scriptures by the many examples that I find. You know, Nicodemus was a, a man with a high position in the Bible, a learned person uh, who came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing. But Jesus would say, you mean that's the level you are at, Nicodemus? Come higher. Come on up higher. Unless you are born again. Come up higher. There is a higher ground, a rich young ruler swimming in the false glory of pride, of enormous wealth and a false perception of spirituality. Is there anything else left for me to do to inherit heaven? Jesus says, you mean that's where you are? That's your ground right now? I will tell you, go sell what you have, then come and follow me. Jesus is saying, I am the higher ground. Come to the higher ground. Let nothing stand between you and the higher ground. For the higher ground is the place you ought to be. The place I ought to be. Waste no time. Come and follow me. Yes. Zacchaeus, you remember? Rich though he be, climbs a tree to see Jesus. Come down. That's not higher ground sufficiently. A tree? No. That's not the level you're at. Wealth? No. Come. I will come into your house and hear what Jesus proclaims. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. You will not rest until salvation has come. 
there is a higher ground. Jesus in your life. The discourse of the Samaritan woman is another good example. The woman was kind of confident. Hmm. I know the life I'm living all right, but I think it's kind of okay. Jesus said, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I know about you. And the moment Jesus began revealing to the woman what she was, she was amazed. Who are you? The Messiah? Who are you? And Jesus would just calmly say, where you are is not the ground. I am the living water. Come to the living water. Oh, give me that water that I may. I am the living water. That is the higher ground. Come on unto the higher ground. If you were to ask me, what is this higher ground? There, there are many, many terminologies that I could use. But I find this in the book Education, page 18, to be one which strikes the code. Higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness. God-likeness is the goal to be reached. Godliness. Godlikeness is the goal to be reached. When sin occurred, the image of God was marred in my life. I do not bear the true, pure, perfect image with which he created me. And my Jesus has spared nothing to make sure that I can get back to his original plan. Thank God. To be in the image of my creator, God. What a wonderful thing to be. And therefore God says, this is what I set before you. Godliness, God likeness. And by the way, that is something to, to celebrate. Something that parents you are here and you know. When they say this your son looks just like you, how do you feel? Mommy, this your daughter? Copyright. You may not say something, but I know you'll giggle like just as you're doing. It feels good. In fact, when they tell me you walk like your dad, I kind of like to feel like walking again. <laughs> it's not about my dad. It's about your creator God. You're made in his image. Has that made a difference in your life? Is this something that you brag about sometimes? That this my God, by his own choice, laugh, he decided to make me after his own image. Celebrate it. Live it. Aspire for it. Pray about it. Work for it. For this is the truth. God is there with you to make that happen if you want. He will do it again. He will do it again. He is God. He is not a man. And when he says, I will do it again, he says, he means he will do it again. That's what he told Jeremiah. When he told Jeremiah in chapter 18 of Jeremiah, to the porter's house and Jeremiah goes over sees a porter walking on the port and the Lord comes to Jeremiah and says you saw the porter when the port was mad in his hands the porter decided to make it again into another beautiful port now God tells Isaiah go ask my people can I not do with them what porter did to the port to remake and reshape, to bring back 
the lost image. And I like the beauty of the message there in Je Jeremiah chapter 18. Like the clay in the potter's hands, God says, so are you in my hands. Your God is ready and willing to bring you to the higher ground. He will not force it on you. He will not force it on me. But in as much as I am willing to cooperate and work with him, he will do it again. My brothers and sisters, there are many examples in the Bible that I could go on to bring before you. This is the message I have read in the Bible very clearly. When you are on a racing track, and that's why I chose the theme, my God and I, my God and I, thank you very much, pastors, approaching the finish line, when you are on the track, racing, there is something that motivates you to move on. What is that? The price. The price. And in your mind, if you will allow anything else to take hold of you than the price, you're not winning that race. To the extent that you're committed and faithful to remain focused on that, and I believe some of them don't even see the track on which they are running. They see the price. Those go. However, there are those on the sidelines who are cheering you up. Go. Sometimes when I'm watching football, I love to watch the spectators than the football players themselves. There is a lot of drama <laughs> of what they do. But they will cheer you on. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. What I have found in the Bible, my Jesus cheers me on to the higher ground. Geoffrey, keep going, keep going, keep going. You will make it. When I'm tired and feel like giving up, when I'm, my energy is, I'm thirsty maybe, looking for water, I'm wondering whether I will make it. He says, you are just about there, keep going. Keep going. For he says, I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to, your, to be your God. Therefore, do not be afraid. Just be holy. What a calling. Be holy. Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Somebody is saying, too high a ground. But you know what? He will do it again. Let no one doubt. That's where faith is needed. That he will do it again. Even though it seems impossible in your own sight. Even though it is. Others declare that it is impossible. That's not what he really means. Well it came out of his mouth. Be holy. Because I am holy. My brothers and sisters, holiness is not rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. It is living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Holiness is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. Holiness is trusting God in trial, in darkness, as well as in the light. Holiness is walking by faith, not by sight. Holiness is relying on God with un 
questioning confidence and resting in his love. Yes, there is a higher ground. My brothers and sisters, heaven will work for you. Let me read this. The heavenly intelligences, intelligences will work with a human agent who seeks with the determined faith that perfection of character which will reach out to perfection in action. To everyone who engages in this work, Christ says, I am at your right hand to help you. Hallelujah. I am there to help you. You are never alone. That's why in this series, it's about my God and I. Not just I, but my God and I. Doing it together. Approaching the finish line. And therefore, this powerful quotation, as the will of man cooperates with the will of God. There's got to be the will of man, for there is the will of God. As the two cooperate, it becomes omnipotent, all-powerful. Wow! Whatever is to be done at his command may be accomplished in his strength. All his biddings are what? His enablings, Christ Object Lessons, page 333. Therefore, the Lord is beckoning on you. Come up on higher ground. Is somebody here saying, I'm pressing on the upward way? We will sing the first stanza. I'm pressing on the upward way. And as we sing in the first stanza, I want you to think, God wants to make this appeal to you even today. Are you on track to the higher ground? Have you considered seriously the higher ground and may the power of God lead you onto the higher ground. God, I, my colleagues in the sanctuary and those watching and following us online are taking our stand again today at the beginning of this series. We want to get to the higher ground. I don't know what you will do for these two weeks here in my life and the lives of my colleagues here. Yet I know you will hold my hand. You will hold the hands of those who are willing. And that together you will walk us to the finish line. How I pray, you will make us willing. How I pray, you will be lifted in wonderful ways on this pulpit again. And that with you, there will be a healing again. There will be restoration. There will be a reconstruction. There will be a true lifting onto another plane of true existence. I pray, Father, that you will humbly, patiently bear with us, but with great resolve. Bring us to the finish line. Your line. Yourself. For we pray earnestly in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless.